I, I, I'll kick us off and you can pick up. Um, well, Matt, why don't you kick us off? Because I know that you've Go, you go ahead, Matt. Okay, so hi, everybody. Welcome to the February 9th uh, Chaos Community Call. Um, the minutes are in the chat. Sean, maybe you could drop them in there again for those that are just arriving now. Right now. I would like you to all notice that I put the Chaos logo at the top of the minutes. Whoa. Is that not? Yeah. <laughs> right there. Don't know why that took so long, but it has happened. So, um, so I'll slowly get that into the other minutes, but that's not really that important. Um, so the first item of business is about communicating our meeting times. And this is uh, the result of a missed meeting and some confusion on kind of what we have at the top of the community minutes and what we have on the participate page. Um, so I've been going through and just cleaning up the top of every minutes sheet so they look the same. Um, and I've also sent PRs into the participate page, like the respective little um, like working group boxes so that that's updated. Um, Georg also had a comment about adding, see that link at the top? Go back up, Sean. This, uh, oh, check yeah, check your local time about getting this back into the participate page. As part of the PRs, I had pulled this out because it was wildly, maybe not wildly, but it was inconsistent in some of the groups. So I, I'm with Georg. I think we should add this back in. Yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, Georg, did you have any other comments to add? You're on mute, so you might be doing two things at the moment. No, I don't have any comments. You captured it well. The okay. concern that I have about times is that we have to deal with daylight savings time, so we need to update all the places we have times mentioned twice a year, unless Europe gets rid of daylight saving times, which would be amazing. Then it's only twice a year. Is that on the table? That Europe is getting rid of daylight savings? Yeah. Uh, they have so. been talking about it for a oh. decade or so. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been discussed here as well in the US, but. The other option is that we just go with UTC, period. <laughs> and, yeah. But we still have to do updates on everything. I mean, putting UTC and having the check your local time link is possibly good enough. Although I think okay. most of our folks are in central or European time, or if they're not, they can offset the one hour or two hours from that easier than UTC possibly. Okay. I don't know. I have no strong feelings. Okay. Ray, did you have something? I thought like you were gonna. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah, it's just, Daylight savings time is just pain, but no, no solution. I'm just complaining, but. Okay. I, I mean, I can, it's an easy enough thing. I, I would say maybe changing all of the times in these documents and putting in some PRs maybe took 30, 30 or 40 minutes. So it wasn't like torture. So I'm happy to do it. When the time comes, I might just need reminders, like when Europe is changing times and all that kind of stuff. One, one thing I might mention, and, and this isn't to discourage working groups from picking the, the time that they, they want to meet, uh, but the, the more stable the meeting time is, like over periods of time, uh, the, the easier it is for, for people to find the meetings. Uh, so it seems like we're kind of running into some of these problems because our, our meeting times have been changing a lot. <laughs> Also true, that was when I was doing some of the participate page, you know, the on the website, there were some old times in there too. So agreed. Stability in the meeting times is much appreciated. All right. Um, any other comments on, on time zones? <laughs> as exciting as talking about time zones can be. All right. Uh, good. So we have uh, Google Summer of Code. This is, I'm kind of looking at 
Sean and Georg. I don't know if things have changed since last week in terms of the application. No, I think that the micro tasks are, and I sent Georg an email to make sure that I'm understanding, but I think the micro tasks are the next big piece that we're missing. Is that right, Georg? Yes, and the project descriptions, which we need to write out what the ideas are for possible projects, right. update our um, Google Sum of Code markdown file, and then, yes, that includes also the micro tasks that we expect students to complete. So I had put a, do you see, Gary, do you see Sean's screen? Yes, I see that. So okay, so I just made a little document that might be easy to start tracking some of these ideas. Um, and then are we gonna, in terms of um, getting them posted, do we just overwrite the existing Google Summer of Code markdown file in the governance repo? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then the same with the micro tasks markdown file. Just. Yep. Okay. We just reuse those same documents. We clean them up. We have to do that by next week. So right now we still have one week for everyone to think about what projects they want to do this summer, write out the description. If we look okay. here on the GSOC ideas markdown file to up. This is Google Season of Docs. It's the other one, Sean. Yeah, so we edit this right here. This is the Google Season of Docs you're on. Yeah, go back. Oh, go go back. One. Two files up. GSOC ideas. And yeah. there it is. OK, so this is what we would update. So we have to delete the old one and just update with the new ideas? Yeah, just I think issue. Issue a pull Just request. issue a PR. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we want to maintain the same format that has worked really well. Then the micro tasks come from the projects themselves. Yes, that is correct. And usually we've okay. expressed those in the form of issues, haven't we, Georg? They're pull requests that the that the their candidates do, the interested the contribution candidates do. Requests, but don't we express what the micro task is as an issue? I believe if you go back to the ideas page, that's how we had it before, where we had one issue um, per project or per project ideas. So I think you had one issue for all of the Augur project ideas yep. because you just had the same thing for everything. And I think Primo Lab had different issues for the different project ideas because they had some different requirements. Yeah, and this we issue... had different requirements. I just did one issue because it was easier for us to manage, but I think separate issues is a good idea. Either way works and the issues serve as a point of conversation with the Google Sum of Code candidates, and then they create pull requests to show that they're completed the micro. Oh, they actually create repositories usually, and then just link to the repository where they show that they've oh, done the work. It's the, That's it, right. We had it two ways. We've had people submit something in their own repository, and we've also had people do pull requests in Augur in the past for the micro task. Go back one page, Sean, so, no, like on, on the repo. Okay. And then go to um, Summer of Code Interest, up five, up, up two. Oh, right, yep. So scroll down. Yeah, so they are... issue a pull request to get it, uh, yeah, to get into this table. Yep. And then if you click on maybe like project proposal, 
you know, or micro task, you'll see it in more detail. Yeah, that's a nice structure. All right. All right, cool. All right, thank you, Georg and Sean, for kind of leading those efforts. Anything else on Summer of Code? Sean or Georg? I don't think so. Okay. If anyone has ideas, feel free to email us so we can include your ideas. If anyone wants to mentor, let us know. Great. Um, all right. So the next thing we had that we talked about last week was getting these docs relocated because all of our Google Docs have been spread out all over the place. Um, it looked like there was app ecosystem had been doing this <laughs> again. Georg, you're uh, you're popular on this meeting. Did I get this right? Looking at this folder. Yeah, that is correct. We spent almost all of the last meeting to move several documents in. So this is your refined um, document, and then the history is back over in this 2020. 2020. The 2020 is for yep our meetings from last year, and then we cleaned up the minutes that we're using currently for this year, because that was something we discussed last week here on this weekly call that we wanted to keep the meeting minutes shorter so they load faster. We did not archive them to a repository in Markdown. We just have them here in the Google Doc right now. And process-wise, we ran into some interesting hiccups. When you have a Google Doc with a regular Gmail account, you can easily transfer ownership to the chaos project at Gmail. You just add them add that account as an editor. And after you, the account is an editor, you can transfer ownership. We also had Google Docs part of an organizational Google C, uh, Suite account. Yeah. And we were not able to transfer ownership out of the organization. So we had to create a copy with the chaos project at Gmail account and then update the Google Docs link everywhere. Okay. So the what I'm what I'm seeing here. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Is this shortcut meaningful or is it just extraneous? We need to delete that. That was okay. before right. we did the move. All right. So that's yeah. So basically we copy and paste it. It's owned by like somebody with a domain account on Google. Either copy paste or even better is transferring ownership of the original document does because it, then the URL doesn't change off the minutes. I thought you said they don't let you do that if you have a domain. If you create the document within an organization, that is correct. The organization might restrict transferring ownership of documents outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have an organization, but I don't restrict anything. So that should be okay. I'm not a corporation. I just jumped in early on their app stuff. So Georg, just logistically, so I can help in the other working groups. If So based on the minutes we have here, just for the chaos weekly meetings, I believe I've transferred ownership of this to the email address that Elizabeth shared last week, you know, the chaos one. What needs to happen at this point then to get this into that folder? So I'm looking here on the document share and it still shows you as the owner and Chaos Project is not listed yet as an editor. Okay, so, so, so right now you're seeing me and probably three of you yeah, so as Sean, editors. If you click on share, yeah, you can okay. add chaos project at gmail.com as a new person. Yes. Is it chaos project? project. Yes, project. Yes, that is correct. As an editor, very good. 
And now if we go back to that dialogue, we should have a new editor. The share dialogue. Yep. And when Matt clicks on that role editor next to Chaos Community, Matt should yeah, see the ability to transfer ownership. Okay, let me do that right now then. Proving that it works. Yep. So make owner, right? Yes. Make this person the owner, the new owner will be notified. And they could remove me. What? <laughs> All right. So yes. So now chaos community is now the owner. Yeah. So Shauna, yeah. It worked. Are you seeing so now, dialogue? So now what needs to happen with chaos community, Georg? So chaos community can now open this file and decide where it is located. Okay. If you want, and I can share my screen and show how that's done. Yeah, it's all be nice. My screen sharing is George Georg. Okay. So I just loaded up this document. I'm yep. logged in as the chaos account. Mm -hmm. And then up here, I have this move symbol. And right now it's just in my drive. And so if I want to move it to meeting minutes, then I just select meeting minutes and move the document here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do it. Yeah. Okay. So now if I reload that, I see it. Okay, great. All right, cool. All right, so we'll then, follow who? Okay, I'm sorry, Gary, go ahead. And then for creating archives, what we did is to take this file, make a copy, and we just created a copy in the respective year, mm -hmm. and then deleted all of the minutes that were not from that year. We're working gotcha. to go back to 2018. Do we want one for every year? Do we want to separate them that way? At this point, I'd say no. Okay. I'm good with that. That sounds easier. <laughs> that's why I said no. <laughs> All right. I, that's looked, great. I looked at the value meeting notes, and it is owned by the Andy. So I have to email him to transfer the ownership to the chaos. OK. Or we yeah, clone it. it. Yeah, copy and, just the document. and just update the minutes. Yeah, just update the link. Or update update the link. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is the that's, second. That's one. probably that's probably less time to do that. To <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. You. Yes, I'll do that. So Georg, who um, who has access to that email address, the chaos project? You and Elizabeth. Do you yeah, know? I don't know who else Elizabeth shared the account okay. information with. I think she shared it with Matt and I as well, somewhere in an email. I don't. I don't think I got it. Believe it or not. No, I'm. I'm not sure I got it. But I feel okay. Like I did. I'll connect with Elizabeth. Because what you were just showing, somebody obviously needs to be part of the process that has access to that email for that account. Okay. Uh, that was very helpful. Thank you, Gary. One of my dogs is asleep. So if you hear weird dog noises. <laughs> All right. Um, Next thing, anything else to add on, on the document moving? I just created the copy for the archive and I'm deleting, I'm trying to delete. My browser just froze. There, it's done. <laughs> I deleted everything that is 2020 or older and have a link here to the archive document at the bottom cool. of this document. So I will, oops. Okay, so I'm going to say that chaos community minutes have been moved and archived. I 
Thank you, Gary. Are we All still right. wanting to are we still wanting to move forward with archiving those on GitHub as well? And Markdown? We discussed or, it last time. What did we tell ourselves last time? It seems like the conversation was moving in favor of, of archiving on, on GitHub, but uh, I could be okay. being correct. If we start here and get it organized, then going to GitHub becomes a much easier activity. Oh, yeah. Weren't we going to just put them into like a PDF on GitHub? Isn't that what we decided, Kevin? Uh, I think we were, I think, no, I think we were going to move them to Markdown, but we were just going to do it once a year. Okay. Is it, um, it's pretty easy to get it out of, out of a Google Doc, yeah. Into Markdown? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't see any problem with it. I'm going to go. People have thoughts on just making a single archive folder or repository on GitHub? Or would each working group archive their own meeting minutes on their repository? If I recall, well, my inclination is more towards just a single repository. I have one point of maintenance for the archive. Uh, the only issue is like when the documents get more and more, it'll create a mess. Because for every working group for like even one metric, we develop a separate doc and we move it to the kiosk project. And as the files gets bigger, like more and more, it'll be difficult to manage. Was it just uh, the meeting minutes that we're talking about or other documents? I think it's just the meeting minutes. Yeah, just the meeting oh. minutes. Oh, then it's fine. I, I thought like we have to transfer the metric uh, doc page no. also to the kiosk. No, no, just the minute, oh. just, this, just these Google Docs. Okay. All right, I'm gonna make a new, um, any preferences on names? Names? For the new repository? Archive. Uh, ar archive, this is good. Uh, uh, meeting archive, archive, maybe? Uh, meeting meeting archive. minutes, yeah. Yeah, minutes archive, meetings archive. Okay, minutes. What what is our? Do we have any? It's a dash, huh? So minutes yes, dash okay. archive. Okay, minutes dash archive. How about that? Sounds good. With an MIT license. Okay. Okay, uh, making sure I got everything. Put that in the minutes. If I can find out where I am. There you are. And then I, I would suggest if we're if we're doing that once a year, maybe we we time it to coincide with the with the metrics release, or one of the metrics releases. Sure, I mean that's uh... why. Yeah, it's fine. Why, why, Kevin? Why do you think it should coincide with that, and not just the end of the year? Uh, for consistency, uh, for one. Uh, Work, workflow too, and right? yeah, I think the the workflow is connected too. You could say that all of this work led up to the publication of these metrics. Archive it, so, and then move on to the next year. Okay, that's a little bit different than what Gayork had set up in the folder structure. It was just based on year, you know, 2020, 2021. We so if we do it. Up. Maybe the cutoff by year, but just actually do the work. Okay, at the end gotcha. Of yeah. in that way. Gotcha, gotcha. So when we when we do the the March release, for example, we can we can archive gotcha. all of the the meeting minutes from the from the prior year. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's also good for consistency as we are working on these that we have the history and by that time we have three months or two months 
already in the new year, so we don't need the old year anymore. Okay, gotcha. All right, that's slowly but surely moving along. Thank you, everybody. Um, oh, this the last time I just put in a pull request, a giant complicated pull request for the metrics template. Okay, or guy pinged you on that one. It's just to add the contributors to the metrics going forward. We talked about this last time. Be prepared to have your mind blown. There's only one file change. <laughs> and that's it's, it's for yeah. Wow, that Matt, Matt, this could be a lot of merge <laughs> conflicts on this one. Thank you. I have been working on that since about 8 a.m. this morning. So I <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna put in my two cents. Thank you, Sean. And so if you recall from last time, the idea we were talking about um, starting to document contributors to metrics. And the, the idea was just to start doing it moving forward. That it gets to be a little, it would be too much work to go backwards in time. And then um, does anybody recall, would we stop doing it on the big, that, you know, that big block of text Sorry, that we have? Oh, all right. Would we stop doing it there? I would still continue carrying that forward. Okay. It just looks impressive I, to have that gigantic list of contributors. Okay. Yeah, I like that too. I agree. Yeah. Just making sure. This gives us a uh, way of making sure we're not missing people because of lack of awareness. So we can we can every time a metrics release, we can just check our big list against the people included in a particular metric. Okay. I'm just okay. Sounds good. Uh, great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Next one. LF sent out an email announcing somebody put that in. Yeah, I, I just added it. I'm sure a lot of people got the same email too. Um, I think we're talking about maybe doing a chaos con in Vancouver, but uh, I mean, it looks like that event got canceled altogether. It's no longer on the events page. Was well, this an OSS NA or an OSS Europe? OSS North America. In, in Dublin? Uh, well, so they were thinking of doing an in-person one in Vancouver, I believe, right in August. Yeah. And the email that was sent out, I believe it was yesterday saying, it's just too soon to have an in-person event, surprise, surprise. And they're targeting, they're gonna focus on in-person event the following month in Dublin. So. That's pretty, sort of funny, just because Dublin's in Europe. What? Yeah, and that's the European open source summit. So they're canceling yeah. the North America oh, one, saying everyone should go to the it. Euro. All right. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Oh, <laughs> no, this is a uh, this is the big thing. It's the word I overlook. This no. Yeah. Gotcha. I glanced okay. over that. <laughs> no worries. Me too. No, you weren't alone. Yeah. Sorry, but yeah, I mean. Who knows? Like I, I think even the Dublin one's a little ambitious to be in person, but we'll see. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I didn't. I actually did not see that. So, so um, would we then target? Uh, I guess is it on the website right? Where we can kind of backdate our chaos con stuff. Maybe talk talk, talk about it next week. Do a yeah, our, plan. This this is the event. Uh, I'll post it on the, uh, I'll add this in the Google Docs too, but this is an events page that I look at once in a while. Whoops. Does anybody else have the thought that this is, because we run a chaos con at FOSDEM too? Right. And, and with, what would be the timing end of October? So October, November, December, it'd be four months. It's a month closer than we've done it before. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't, I'm itching for a chaos con. It's <laughs> anyway, no, I hear you. I, I, I like the idea. What are people, what are other people's thoughts on targeting I mean, something I, around Europe? I think it's, I think it's tough. Like, I mean, when are we going to know for sure that this event's actually going to happen in person? I would guess June. Right. 
right? I mean, we can plan for like all this thing, like starting now, but if they say in July that we can't do this because it's still bad, then it all goes out the window, right? How, but how much, maybe, yeah, no, I, um, how much work, like if it goes out the window, <laughs> which would yeah. be um, Kevin or Georg, do you guys have a sense of like how much effort it takes to kind of get these off the ground from zero? I've lost the yeah. math. I see that. We yeah. all see I mean, that. yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if it's the amount of work. Like, I mean, Kevin or like Gail, you can disagree with me. Uh, I mean, putting volunteers together to announce, make announcement on CFPs, like evaluate them, you know, encourage people to submit CFPs. That's not a huge deal, but we don't want to have people submit CFPs and then have to announce that, well, sorry, yeah. like we can't do this, right? So we don't want to even, I don't know if we want to even start the motion on this thing, right? So yeah. Yeah. The biggest issue may be the uh, the event space. Like, do we need to do we need to find event space? Do we need to book it out? Uh, what I happens mean, for, if we need to cancel? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean for for LF, I'm pretty convinced that they're going to give us a space for free. Uh, okay. Yeah, they'll. I mean, you know, that's they've been consistently good about that in the past. Like if it's you know in conjunction with the with the open source summit, like they'll give us a conference room or two uh, that, so that I don't think it's a big deal. It's, it's, it's more of just starting hold the like getting all this thing in motion and getting community members excited and submitting CFPs and having to cancel that makes it hard. But, yeah. I'm listening to you talk to us thinking keynotes, which is kind of in that same, yeah. same thing, uh, coordinating speakers. Okay. Right. So, I mean, I maybe we'll meet another month or so, like maybe they'll make a decision because obviously they made this announcement for the event and they were planning in August. So this event in Dublin is a month later. So maybe in about late March, they'll, you know, if they do decide that it's, it's not a, not a safe thing to do, they'll probably go ahead and get it off the calendar or, or make it virtual, right? But. Oh, okay, that's helpful. I think an easy thing for us to do is ask LF, hey, can we have a room? If they cancel the event, then we don't have to worry about canceling the room. And then as everyone suggested, in April, May, we can start the CFP and putting agenda together. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess even May is not too late. I mean, because people won't start vacationing until like late June, July timeframe. So even if we start the CFP drive in worst case, like first of May, I think that would be okay. But, yeah, okay. yeah I, I, so. I'll do that. I can get your guy can reach out to somebody at the LF and just see if we could get a room. Yeah, awesome. or even ask them when they think they make a go no go decision on an in person event. I mean, they may yeah, not tell us, but it doesn't no. hurt to ask. Like, yeah, no, and obviously there's like there'll be a million ancillary if it does happen, or as it's happening, right. there'll be a million ancillary events <laughs> trying right. to. Were you gonna reach out to Kate, or were you gonna ping Angela, who has? Yeah, events? Angela Brian, I can do. Yeah, Kate. yeah, yeah. Just... yeah. Angela would be would be cool i mean feel free to okay. like a copy copy me on it i mean not okay. that i'm going to add any value but okay uh, it'll be good to know i mean uh, just as an fyi i've been sort of using lf as a proxy for to get a sense as to when people might start scheduling in-person events yeah um, right i mean it's not perfect but if they think they can do something in september that's a good sign like other events might happen like in Q4 in person. Like if not, then I think it's, you know, we may not have events until next year, but. Okay. Yeah. Just so you all know, I, I put it in the minutes. I'm inclined always to run these the day before. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. That's worked out yeah. well for us. I always think the last days are people are just <laughs> yeah people are gone right they don't they yeah. don't yeah 
Okay. The day after or, is good for board meetings. Yeah, yes, <laughs> not conferences. Okay, cool. I, I thought I thought Georg was going to say a tour of the of the Guinness factory, but <laughs> it's also good for that. <laughs> That's also always a trip worth. Yeah. Well, we can we can do the board meeting there, but. Hey, that's yeah. a good idea. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of Dublin. So, uh... all right. Um, website. Did somebody put that in there? I did not. Yep, yeah, I dropped that in there. Uh, so after the. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I think Sean. Sean wanted to oh, say Kevin, something. Go ahead. I'm res I was referring to Bernard's text. Oh, okay. Huh. Uh, so sometime shortly after the metrics release here in the, uh, in March, we are going to, uh, 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 start the process of the, the website migration. Uh, so we need to, we need to decide on a, uh, uh, metrics hosting. So the one that we've been talking about is, is green geeks. I'm, uh, I'm perfectly happy to. Uh, explore several uh, hosting companies if we want to. If we want to look, yeah, uh, but I would uh, I would like some recommendations on on who to look for. Unless everyone's just happy going with with Green Geeks, uh, I've had some experience with HostGator in the past. They were pr they're pretty good, uh, but the the truth is when we look at price, price is probably going to be pretty pretty similar for all of them. So. My wife uses HostGator for her uh, influencer presence, and uh, I've configured it. It's just as easy as Green Geeks. Like you can throw it, you can toss a coin. Yeah, that's kind I of the, that's my thought on it as well. Like we can we can look at four or five of them, and I'm happy to put together a, a worksheet that compares them. Uh, but how important is that to everybody? Uh, I'd say it's not important as all web posters have been around long enough. Their products are pretty standard across the board and price is pretty low across all of them. So I don't think it matters. And Green Geeks is well thought of. Uh, and I, I think uh, as we've talked about prior, uh, I think we, we like their focus on uh, uh, environmentally uh, uh, conscious uh, hosting. Okay, well, uh, sounds like sounds like we have a winner. <laughs> okay, if, if that's the case, so I do need I need someone who has like money. <laughs> well, I put that I put that in there because okay. we can't community bridge can't invoice. Yeah, you know, so we're gonna need it can reimburse, but it can't deal with invoices. I mean, I can um, I can do a reimbursement if you want. But, you can do it somewhere yeah. else. No, that'd be great. I mean, the and I can tell you the. Have you been reimbursed from Community Bridge, Sean? I haven't, but I can. It's super. Hard. It's really fast. And um, all right, yeah. So I'll um, I'll I'll get with Elizabeth on the um. I'll make it all under the Chaos Project at Gmail email, so that nothing is tied to me other than the initial payment. Yep. And then, how much is it a year? I'd have to Kevin? look at a new customer, Kevin. Oh, uh, oh, for just approximately. So we're, I think we're getting the, we'd be getting the pro version, which ends up being around like ten dollars a month at most. Uh, Since, so uh, I mean, you're you're talking like a hundred, uh, or actually pre, I think premium is what we were talking about. That's yeah, eight ninety five a month. Yeah, so it's about a hundred, hundred and twenty uh, a year, right? Okay, so. So we have um, the the three finance committee approvers on the call between Georg, and Ray, and myself. Yeah. Do either of you have a particular concern about <clears throat> about this? No, none, none at all. No concern. Approved. Okay. <clears throat> well, send us an email so we have it in writing. Sure. So okay. Sean, when you when you get that set up or if you want me to go through the process with you, let me know. 
Do you, um, I mean, if you if you want to, I mean, the setting up that looks like I just have to. I'll just use a domain that I own instead because we're going to be transferring a domain. That's the main point. So, yeah. and you can create new subdomains as much as you want. So, I'll just set it up with some placeholder domain. Okay. I'll use the chaos community at gmail.com email. And after that, I think it should be super straightforward for anybody to log in that needs to and start poking around. Okay. So and if you, if you want to go over it together, if you've never used a hosting provider before, I'm happy to do that also. No, I, I have, I have, uh, no, uh, I've, I've hosted several websites over the years. So. Kind of figured you had, uh, but we can, uh, we can, uh, we have a web content meeting uh, in the first week of March. So I would propose we, the, this next this next step, which I believe is gonna be uh, a pilot to see how that migration uh, looks. Uh, we, can, we can coordinate that in uh, the first of March, I suppose, so. Yeah. So question, are we thinking about moving the chaos domain over to be hosted there's or does do we keep the domain in control of the linux foundation yeah the lf would own the subdomain because they own the top level domain and or the the main domain we're a subdomain of linux foundation dot or no we're not we're not mm -hmm. I, I would think we would leave that in the hands of the lf but yeah I, I think when we when we talked about it prior uh it was always we leave it with them so it's just it's easier for them to it's one less thing we have to worry about. So they just changed the name servers once we're ready. Yeah. Or the actually not even the name servers. They just changed the, the IP underlying. Do it. Yep. It's the underlying easy. IP. If you want, maybe we can ask them for new.chaos.community or something for setting up the server. It's exactly what Kevin and I had discussed. Yeah. Okay. I'll rest my case. I'll be quiet. No, it's a good idea because we don't want to go live like <laughs> without testing it. So do you want me to ping yeah. Brian to see if we can yeah. get the subdomain on chaos.community? Mm -hmm. Okay. Craig can do that. What's that? Volunteering. Craig oh, is do the one who oh, Craig. always Craig. does the I heard, websites. I heard, I heard Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my heart skipped a beat. Like, I don't know how to do that. Like, You're doing it, man. I, <laughs> Ray has superpowers. No, no. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll do that right after this call. All right. Anything else from people? Very productive meeting. I, I think, Sean and Matt, you were talking about cold weather. Did you, did you get your hoodie from folks in Shanghai? Like, yeah, I'm more, it's really nice. Like, yeah, actually, my son took it. He loves it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, the yeah, quality got, is, quality is just amazing. Chinese yeah. meetup. Yeah. 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 I haven't got it yet, but I, um, I, I sent them my address late, so. Is that what you're wearing right now? Yeah, no, I, it's, no. it's, it's really warm. Right it's, yeah, it's right soft on. And it's one of the best hoodies <laughs> I've gotten in a while, so. Right on. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for your time and effort on today's call. I think we got a lot of things done. So that's awesome. All right. Everybody have a great week. See you, you too. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.